Hey guys, welcome back from Classic Work. Today we're going to be talking about one of the neatest tools, out, layout tools out there, which is the combination square. I've had a lot of requests over the years to do a basic video on this very tool. Now, personally, I don't use combination square that much. They're, they're more for meticulous work rather than production work, but there are some really, really good things about the tool. So, if y'all are fans of the show, y'all know that I love the speed square. This right here is a very, very utilitarian design of function and speed, hence the name. So what is the main difference between these two tools? Because the speed square was actually kind of a, a kind of a offshoot from the combination square. The speed square is primarily used for wood. Um, if you're doing a lot of timber framing or any kind of framing with wood, the speed square is good. It, it does okay in the uh, fab shop with welders and stuff like that. It's, it starts to lose its precision when you need to get really, really fine detail. So the, the protractor right here on the side, you start to lose a lot of your real, real concise numbers. That's where the combination square starts to exceed at. So this one's good for wood and some rough layout. This one right here is very good for little finicky precise work. So. Most people think when they look at a combination square that this is the whole tool, that you have a square body and you have a ruler, and that's basically not true. The combination square also comes with a protracting head that attaches to the ruler as well as a center finder, which also attaches to the ruler. So let's give a demonstration of them so you kind of know what I'm talking about. So we got the square head on here, so we'll, I'll show it first. So the first thing, since it is a square, you can bump it up to the edge of a workpiece, just like so, and scribe a 90 degree line off the ruler. And it also has a 45 degree leg on it, the same as the speed square, which you can do precisely do a nice 45 line with it also. So now, another cool thing about the square head, as a lot of people don't know, there's a little cap right here on the back that has, it looks like a little needle on it. Now this right here is a scribe. This tool right here is actually used to perform tasks with what's known as a dyeing agent. And I'll show a demonstration of that in just a second. So that's a real neat little aspect, it's a little extra feature. And this one right here actually has a ruler on it. Well, not a ruler, but a level on it as well. So you can, you know, roughly level something because it's not, you don't have a lot of bearing surface here. But that is just a little look at the square head. The protracting head right here we're taking a look at. And if you can see, there's a zero mark right here. And you can see in fine resolution how many degrees that you are off or on. So, We'll set this one to 60, as you can tell. We got the zero lined up with the 60. And it's a little off, that's like 61. There we go, there's 60. So what you'll do after you set it is they've got two little knobs on the back here. You'll tighten them up. And there, it'll stay. You can rock it back and forth and it'll stay there. So let's put it down and pull a 60 degree on it and see what we get. Okay, we got our 60 degree set on our combination square. And we'll just right here, I'll show you a demonstration. So you'll put your leg on there just like you did on the square head and then you'll scrub a line. Not time for a new magic marker. Okay, so there's a 60 degree line. Now we can check that, we'll do that with the speed square. So we'll just place our speed square down and use our pivot. Now, I don't know if you can read that from there, but the speed square says that's 30 degrees. So what gives? Why is it showing that? All right. Now this here is where the speed square and the combination square differ a little bit. The combination square is reading 60 degrees from a 180 degree line that makes any kind of sense. 
So this square right here, or this protractor, is reading from this line, okay? The speed square, on the other hand, is, is reading from square line, okay? That makes any kind of sense. So whatever, it's going to be a difference of 90 degrees, whether you, you add it or subtract it. So to give you an example, if we take the speed square and we set it on 60 degrees, we'll come way up here. So we'll use our pivot, set it on 60 degrees, and then we'll scribe a line. I'm to get a pencil. Okay. If you take this combination square now and you read that line, it will not say 60 degrees, it will say 30. So we'll double check that, put it on there, and let me focus the camera so you can see it, and I'm going to tighten it up. If you can read that right there, it says 30 degrees. So just remember the reference of this tool and the speed square is different. So try not to get that confused. They're both different. All right, I'm going to show you where the protractor, the square head, everything starts to come into its own is with really, really precise work. So I've got a piece of steel here, it's four by four steel, and I've put a die agent on it. This You could use Persian blue, I'm using Dicom here. And the cool thing about this is you can get a really, really precise line. So I've got the square set at 72 degrees, just for, that's a pretty good illustration of like, uh, say if you're doing a bolt pattern, five hole bolt pattern from 360, 72 degrees apart. So once again, you'll square it up, You'll take some form of scribe. You can either use one like this one, this is a carbide scribe, or you can use the one that came with it, which is the little steel one. So you'll take it and just place it right on the edge of the ruler and you'll just pull one straight line. You can see you got a nice crisp line there. So we can check and see how precise this is. I actually have a very, very accurate protractor that will tell us if that's 72 degrees or not. So let's take a look at it. This right here is a veneer protractor. This here is a Sterrett. So I'm just gonna check it and see how accurate that was. But it says right at 71 degrees, if I'm reading correctly. So that's not bad. That's This right here is a precision tool here. And uh, just for a little old, a uh, little cheap uh, combination square being roughly one degree off, that's pretty good. That's a lot better than the speed square. Your just resolution is not that great. Going back to laying out with Dicom, I've got the square head back on here. The, another cool thing is the ruler has, has a pretty fine resolution on it, which I'm not a fan of. Um, I don't know why in the world they put 64s on a ruler. Ain't nobody gonna use them. I mean, that's what we got calipers for. So, but it does have six tenths has tents, which I don't get that once again. 30 seconds you can use, but these ruler manufacturers, they really need to quit doing some of this stuff. I don't use them, some, some other folks might. But another cool aspect of the tool here is you can, uh, you can pull with it at, at any, any increment that you can think of because it's adjustable. That's one thing the speed square can't do. It can, it can do whole numbers, but it can't do in between numbers. So I just got this set at, at an inch. And uh, once again, you can use your scribe to pull down with the actual square. This actually helps if it's in lockdown vice or something. But we can test the accuracy of how accurate that ruler is. Go to one inch and we'll test it. It looks really good very few mechanical means that can get that accurate. So, yeah, speed square can't do that. Okay, the last one I'm gonna show is the center finding head. So what is it good for? Well, if you've got a part and you roughly wanna know where the center of it is, if it's round at least, 
you can use the center finder here. All you got to do is just line two of the legs up onto the part, hold it nice and flush, and you'll take a scribe once again, and you'll scribe through the ruler. And you'll put in one mark, and then you can turn it 90 degrees, or just any degree really, just so you can get a second line, and scribe it again. And then Bob's your uncle. If you can see that, that is a very, very close center mark. So it has to be round in order for this to work. It doesn't work on square objects as far as I know. But you know, square is pretty easy. You can just go from, from corner to corner. But round to round, that's pretty impressive. And if I'm not mistaken, it'll go even bigger. I'll see if I got a bigger piece of stock and it'll, it'll, it'll do it just as accurately as that. Now this right here is a hole saw, but concept is the same. As you can tell that it'll, it'll put that ruler right in the middle of that circle so it looks half of it. So, very impressive, you know. That, a lot of times it's hard to find center on a round object, so that, that'll take a lot of the guesswork out of it. One last thing I want to talk about here, guys, is there's lots of different styles of combination square out there. And uh, here's just a few examples. This one right here is a Stanley. And this one's been heavily abused. This was given to me out of a welding shop. And it people treat these things like hammers. They, uh, they fall off of tables. They, uh, they drop them on things. They, they get exposed to heat and all kinds of things. And the combination square gets a bad rap about not being very accurate. And part of it is, is poor quality is one part of it. And the other one is just plain old abuse. They, these are precision instruments and they have to be very well taken care of. This one right here is a Craftsman. This is a 14 inch ruler on this one. And this one's rode around in a truck practically all of its life and it's still accurate. It, you, you have to take care of these tools. They're just like calipers. They're very, very fragile. So the, the biggest thing that I don't like about the combination square is, is you have to change the heads to use the other processes. And those heads, if anybody's ever used one, I've never found one that just, just slides on very easily. They, they take some finessing to do. The cool thing about the combination square is they do come in different sizes. They, come, they range from this one right here, which is a 12 inch, like the 14 inches in the back, and also even smaller. They make four inches and six inches like this one right here. But guys, that's going to wrap it up. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you got something out of it. Till next time.